how you read scripture will determine whether you will see God. I want to submit to you that there are two types of believers in this world. Number one, the believer who reads the scriptures in search of words and knowledge that they can use to correct others with. That they can use as ammunition for the pointing of the finger. Or number two, the believer who reads the words in the scriptures and sees those words as a mirror. They look upon the words of the Bible as looking upon themselves in order to judge themselves in light of it, looking at their own works in light of the works of the Holy One of Israel, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. See, I want to submit to you, the one believer is in search of how Lord, how can I become more like you? Well, the other one is looking at how he can put down others who don't look like him. And see, the one is a believer in pursuit of humility, while the other one is being driven by pride. And this very simple aspect of whether you see the Bible and read the Bible as a mirror will really be what makes or breaks you on Judgment Day before him. It is what the Pharisees in Yeshua's day who came against him fell into. They were so preoccupied with studying the Torah in order to point the finger that they missed the study of it in order to point the finger right back at themselves, in order to evaluate themselves through their own humility. See, if you study the scriptures first and foremostly in order to become a better person, then yes, you will in that very same vein be able to recognize it when someone doesn't walk in the ways that your Messiah walked. And there is a place for gentle, loving and compassionate correction. But woe to him who studies it in order to bring about that correction, because he will be the hypocrite. He will be the one who corrects others with the very things that he himself is guilty of. And you know what is the biggest fear that this needs to put in us, brothers and sisters, is the fact that it is the religious man who is most likely to fall into this error. The one who thinks, well, I have all of this knowledge and I know all of this, these things about God and and the Bible. And I know I can I can quote every Bible verse. I can even tell you where it's written. But at the same time, he himself is guilty of it all because he has been studying it, been reading it totally wrong with the wrong intentions. You see, I want to submit to you that when Moses went up to the mountain and he received these words, the law from the father, he came down from there and and ultimately he finds Israel at the base of the mountain building a golden calf. But yet, even while that happens, he comes before the father. And he says, Lord, if you want to destroy them, you need to blot my name out of the book of life as well. And if you think about that, you have to ask yourself, why was Moses so humble? It was because he just came down from a mountain and he just received a bunch of laws that he recognized was speaking about him more than anyone else because Moses stood before God on that mountain as a murderer. Moses had the humility to realize that God, I am a sinner of sinners. And so when he sees the people commit sin, yes, he is grieved. Yes, he takes the tablets and he breaks them. And yes, he has the ability to correct them and he does. But he also recognizes that he is dirty, too. And so that is why he's able to approach Israel with this humble heart of compassion and say, God, 
Lord, if you destroy them, you need to destroy me too, because I am really as guilty as they are, but just in a different way. And that's what we need to understand. Is that when we want to point the finger at a brother or a sister, right? At what they're doing wrong. We are eager to do that when we don't fully realize that we are just as guilty as they are just in another way. While they may be a murderer, we are a, a, an adulterer. While they may be a liar, we are a gossip. At the end of the day, if we recognize through our reading of the law of God, our own sin, that reminding us of how much we need the Messiah who saves us, then we will be able to come to others with a gentle, loving, compassionate correction. And even one that's going to be able to say, Lord, if you take them out, Lord, take me out with them too. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The heart of even the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you Luke 7, verse 47. Yeshua says, Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. I want to submit to you Yeshua's opening up and speaking about this woman who's been, who's been washing his feet with her tears and anointing him. And he is speaking about the Pharisee who is only pointing the finger at the fact that she's doing these wonderful things for him. And he is saying this line, he who is forgiven little loves little. Yeshua is making a tongue in cheek comment to them because all of them, whether the Pharisee or the women, all of them are in dire need of forgiveness, for they have great sin. All of them do, even the religious or the unreli- or the unreligious. They all need Yeshua. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that the only difference between that woman who was washing his feet and anointing him and the Pharisee who was pulling up his nose. The only difference was that the one was humble enough to realize their own sin, while the other was too prideful to see it. The one had looked upon the law of God and seen their transgression, and the other looked upon it and could only see the transgression of others. Paul speaks about these who are always learning, yet never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And he says this, but understand this, that in the last days, something will happen. There will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, and not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with deceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And what Paul is going to be speaking of, and as he is speaking, he is really speaking about the religious man of the last days who will become these things when he does not guard himself. He is speaking about a religious man who will become brutal without self-control and heartless. He says about this man that he will have an appearance of godliness. He will look religious, but he will deny the power of it. Avoid such people. Verse 7, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Always learning, always learning, always learning the next new greatest thing, but never able to come to truth. How can it be that you learn truth, you learn knowledge that is leads to truth while not attaining truth itself? Because ultimately, brothers and sisters, just because you learn new knowledge doesn't mean that you're maturing spiritually. When you're learning knowledge to point the finger at others, you will not learn knowledge to mature spiritually for yourself. And he goes on and he talks about those who will be denying its power because you can learn the knowledge and read the word. 
but deny the power of the word to change you because you do not humble yourself to it. And then when others come and they point out, they show you your faults, your hypocrisies. You take on a victimhood mentality where it is always someone else's fault. You never take own responsibility because you always preoccupied with pointing the finger at someone else. And when God forces introspection upon you through his loving mercy that comes in the form of judgment, Manipulation comes from you because you try and wrangle yourself out of it. And when others see the judgment that has come upon your life, you only have excuses for what's come upon your life. You have, you're not able to actually be confronted with the truth of God's word that is there to pierce you and show you repentance. See, we need to be living in repentance. The man who is offended when he is called to repentance is the man who will die in his sin. God is calling us to be meek and humble so that we can grow into true spiritual maturity and allow his word to do its good work inside of us. Father, I pray, Lord, for everyone who is listening, that you would come and do work inside of us, that you would pierce our hearts with your loving kindness. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would come and let when we read the word, Lord, help us to recognize, oh, Father, help us to recognize our own sin and our own shortcomings and help us to have a love foster inside of us so that we can love others into the truth instead of having a spirit of condemnation. We pray all this in the name of Yeshua. I want to say a special thank you to our partners who have made this video and every other video this month possible. I love you guys. I'm grateful for your support. I'll see you guys in the next one. Shalom.